Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on the channel. In today's interview, we have the exciting American talent, Luke Lamberty, who enjoyed his first season with Trinity Racing in 2021. Luke made headlines as he snatched the Pro Criterion National Championships and in doing so became the youngest ever winner of their league title. So, a lot to discuss in today's video. So without further ado, here is the interview with Luke Lamberty. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm delighted to be joined by Luke and great to have you here Luke where are you in the world right now yeah thank you very much for having me on I'm currently in northern California about an hour north of San Francisco in Sonoma County that must be a bit better weather than we have here in the UK today's not so good but normally pretty good weather so Luke you're part of this uh well next generation of American writers and uh yeah we'll go into detail of the things you've done this year but just taking a step back, how have you kind of, why, why choose cycling? There's so many different sports in America, NFL, NBA. Well, you can name so many more sports ahead of cycling. So what drew you to the bike? Yeah, when I was, uh, when I was a little kid, I've always been on two wheels. I started on motocross when I was really little and raced motocross for a while and then started training on a bicycle um, at a pretty young age. And then, I don't know, I just kind of fell in love with cycling from there and um, was doing both and then fully switched to bikes when I was like 14, 15, and then I've been racing bicycles since then. So kind of a unique way into the sport, but that's how I ended up. I mean, this year was your first, well, I want to say first year in a under 23, but you've also done senior races as well. What was it like before uh, getting to this stage where you're with Trinity? Yeah, um, so I spent, I started on Team Swift, which is kind of a really local program here to me that uh, I raced on for a long time as a junior. And then I went to Lux, which is kind of the premier U.S. junior team um, and spent two years with them. And my first year, spent a lot of time in Europe with the national team and um, racing kind of all over Europe. And then my second year junior, um, didn't really do any racing with everything going on. And uh, yeah, and then ended up on Trinity. So it wasn't the perfect two years as a junior I'd hoped for. I wanted to do a lot more the second year, but yeah, wasn't able to do that, but was still lucky enough to get on Trinity after my first year racing. And uh, yeah, it's been a good run to here. And then yeah, I had my first year with Trinity this year. I mean, one of the classic junior races that you actually did was Paro Bay. How was Paro Bay for you? We saw this year was an absolutely insane addition, but of course the junior courses, well, it's similar, but of course it wasn't this year you did it. Yeah. So we do like the last 120k of sectors that the pro race does. And I can still say that was one of my favorite races as a junior, for sure. We had a really good team that whole year. Uh, we were really successful and yeah, it was Paro Bay was really good. Um, I was really looking forward to doing Worlds in Yorkshire, but I actually broke my collarbone two weeks before that. So I skipped Worlds as a junior and yeah, but it was definitely a really cool race to be a part of and do as a junior, just because growing up, you always watch Roubaix, like it's an iconic race and it's one of the best races in the year to watch. And so uh, to actually be able to race it. And then after we finished about three hours later, it was the pro finish. So we were in the velodrome. Um, when Gilbert won that year. I mean, America has so many riders that have wanted to win Roubaix, like Tyler Finney, George Hincapie seemed to do try to do it as well. So yeah, I don't know. Is Cobble something that you like to race? I know it's really early, but... Yeah, for sure. No, I definitely, uh, I love the classics. It's been a while now since I've got to kind of do a good spring as even this year with under 23 stuff, a lot of the spring was canceled or moved back and then didn't really happen. And so... I'm definitely looking forward to doing the classic stuff next year because that is what I really do want to do. And that's what I love is the cobbles and rainy days in Belgium, really. <laughs> well, you alluded to it before. We have had this, uh, let's call it a pandemic, which it is. Uh, how has that kind of uh, hampered you in a way as well? You are in America now. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of the racing that you've been doing, we'll talk about that later, but has been in Europe. So has that been a bit of a annoyance for you yeah um i mean last year it was really hard to come during 2020 was pretty tough i never really went over to europe because it was too hard to get there and then no junior races were really happening it was only the pro stuff so that was definitely a little bit of a struggle and then there wasn't really any racing in the u.s so i had pretty much zero race days after everything shut down um but this year it was all right i mean it's not easy but we're kind of learning to go with it and i spent 
a lot of time just where I was racing. I spent a lot of time just based in Belgium and we had longer blocks there instead of traveling um, too much just because every time you travel, it's a test travel and then test before the race. And it just made it easier to be in kind of one spot and drive and base from there. And uh, yeah, it really wasn't too bad once we figured it out, but it took a little bit of getting used to having a test for every race. And every time you cross a border, having a test and it's just, it's just a little bit more to the process, but at least we're back racing, I guess. I mean, I don't want to complain too much because we had no racing, but it is still a little bit of a pain. Well, okay. Moving on to more positive notes. Uh, you did one of, well, as we said, it's your first under 23 year and uh, you've already taken part in one of the most prestigious under 23 races, the baby Giro. And uh, yeah. How do you find your first baby Giro? Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely a really good experience. It wasn't, wasn't easy, but we went in there with a good team. Um, ben Turner, who was on our team, took the pink jersey after the TT. And then we had Tom Glogue, who was going for the podium overall. And we kind of went all in for him to get third overall. And he didn't quite get it, but we gave, gave our best effort for that and still had an amazing um, team week. And then Ben Healy won the last stage. And so as an overall team, we can't complain at all. We had uh, We had an amazing race. Like it wasn't the best results for me or I wasn't going that amazing but as a whole team we rode well and uh had some good results that came out of team so that definitely was uh very good to be a part of something quite astonishing happened uh, after the baby Giro you went to the U.S. national crits crits are huge in America uh, huge in the UK as well the tour series uh but yeah talk us through that race because uh that was absolutely incredible yeah um yeah i mean crits are definitely blowing up now in the u.s has kind of gotten bigger and bigger and that's kind of what u.s racing has turned into is less road races and kind of more crits and that's what a lot of the guys in the u.s are doing now and uh yeah i went home and did crit nationals uh the friday after the baby Giro finished on sunday and yeah it was a successful race for me it was a pretty stressful race the whole time and just being on it because i didn't have any teammates there i was kind of the only american on training besides the mountain bike side we have two americans but uh yeah it was i mean obviously i can't complain i came away with the win so definitely super stoked on that it was a big deal for sure to win it and be the youngest guy to win it was super cool so I mean, when you look at some of the names who have won it in the past, Tyler Farah is on there, Travis McCabe as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of prestige with this national title. Yeah, for sure. No, it's definitely super cool to win it, especially my first year, you know. Like, it's uh, it's definitely feels good to get a win and add my name to the list. But it's also, it's not the big European scene. It doesn't mean much in Europe, but it's definitely still really cool to win in the U.S. And it's kind of a prestige in the U.S. And more and more people are noticing Chris now they've gotten bigger and bigger in the U.S. So it's a little bit more followed now. Um, yeah. What do you think the the reason for that is? Because also Justin Williams with the Legion LA team, they seem to be absolutely everywhere in terms of hype. What do you think the reason is for this insane crit interest? I, I don't blame them because it's a very fast racing. I think a lot of the reason really is them. They brought a lot of eyes to the crit racing scene. Um and I think really that's a lot of it is they've brought back up the crit racing scene because they're doing it. And I would say that's a lot of the reason that there's prestige around it. And uh, yeah, they're definitely bringing it up and kind of swinging, swinging as hard as they can and going as big as they can. They're trying to bring it back up. And so we'll see, like it has been big in America and then it's kind of had a dip the last five years or so, but I think it's on the way back up and it's only growing. So we'll see where it goes but i think a lot of the reason is because legion of la i mean well you are from california and uh, one of my favorite races is the tour of california and i was devastated that it well after it had its debut on the world tour that they went into this hiatus is that a race that's inspired you and do you think hopefully that will come back as well in the future I really hope it'll come back. It's a race that I've seen since I was a really little kid and been riding. It used to come 1K from my house down on the next street. It used to go by every year and have a finish that's 10K away. It used to be a sprint stage, and I've watched it for a long time, and it's a race I've always said I really wanted to do. Like, I've always wanted to race Tour California, and then as soon as I'm eligible and uh, I'm in my first year of elites and the race is gone, so that's a little bit sad, but I do hope it comes back because I would love to be able to – do that race especially because it's so close to home and a race that i've looked up to and watched since i was a little kid and so it would be an amazing experience to be able to actually be a part of it but we'll see if it comes back or not 
Is the tour series in the UK? Well, Trinity, obviously, a British team. Is that something that you want to tick off, basically? Very fast racing. There's been a lot of World Tour riders who have, well, riders who have gone on to begin better things, such as Charlie yeah. and Harry Tanfield, just to mention a few. Yeah, yeah. I definitely want to go do some UK crits. I haven't done any, and uh, I want to get out to do some. It didn't quite work out this year, but hopefully next year I'll be able to kind of jump over to UK and get in some crits. It'll definitely... Uh, be something that I want to work in the schedule for next year and just to do some UK crits because it's a lot different I think US crits are a lot different than UK crits and both have good and bad and so I want to do some UK crits and see see how those are too um so it's kind of like a why not it's something I'm excited about and want to do tour series or some of the bigger crits for sure so on the note of uh British team you also went to the tour of Britain this year where well it was a absolutely stacked field you had Walt Van Aert there, you had Julian Philippe. You've just come out of the junior ranks and you're already racing with the biggest stars on the planet. How was the build-up to that? And yeah, how did you find the Tour of Britain? Yeah, um, my preparation wasn't great. I actually, like four-ish weeks before, I took two weeks off because I had a little bit of an issue with my knee and then ended up uh, going out to Belgium and just trying to get as much fitness as I could with racing some 1.1s for two weeks before. So I had two weeks to kind of just go full gas and get as much fitness as I could going into Tour of Britain. Um, and it went quite well, got fitness back, raced a lot and uh, went into Tour of Britain feeling pretty solid. Definitely a hard race. It's kind of just grippy roads and on the pedals all day. Like it never, it never eases off. But yeah, it was, I mean, it was definitely good to race some of the top guys. A lot of guys were using it as the world's prep. And so I think it was really cool to uh, kind of be able to race those guys and you get to see where they're at, you know, and see what they're doing and uh, race against them is definitely cool because you, I mean, you watch those guys, you watch Wout in the tour, you watch Ala Philippe at Worlds, like you, I watch those races. And so to race with them is definitely really cool. And uh, yeah, and then how to f one decent day and some other uh, pretty good solid days. So can't complain. Well, I'm going to pull you up on that day. So stage five into Warrington. And uh, yeah, in the final corner, two riders decade after, well, it was a very wet day. And then suddenly yeah. you find yourself in this very elite group. You're on the wheel of Ethan Hayter. And uh, while well, Julian Philippe was up there as well. And Mark Cavendish, what's going through your mind at that point? Yeah. Um, yeah. So there was a crash that I was able to kind of go up the inside and avoid in the last corner. And uh get into kind of a select group in the sprint and I definitely made some mistakes kind of looking back at the sprint like Cavendish had to close to the wheel and uh I didn't know that I thought he was still fresh and so I kind of let him in on the wheel when I shouldn't have on Hater's wheel and I probably should have stayed on Ethan's wheel in that sprint and not let Cavendish in and then sprinted but uh yeah I let Cavendish in and then he kind of lost the wheel from Hater and I was able to get around him and get fourth on the stage but uh definitely learned a lot like it's cool to be up there in those sprints and it was exciting but it's also you know it can be hard to hard to like watch it and know that you maybe could have done more if you'd have done this right like that's always the case with sprinting but there's always something you could do a little bit more unless you win but yeah definitely learned a lot and I'm happy with the result like I'm happy to be up there and know that I can be up there in those sprints it's just that uh, it helps the confidence for sure I mean, not many 18-year-olds can say that they beat Mark Cavendish uh, in a sprint. So, um, no. but yeah, anyways, you're alluding to it. Many of the riders were using the Tour of Britain to kind of a tune-up for the World Championships. You went to Flanders as well. And uh, what was your experience of Flanders? Yeah, Flanders was super cool. Um, it was an amazing course. And then it finished on that circuit in Leuven. And it's the most people I'd seen out to a bike race in a long, long time, probably ever, to be honest, the biggest cycling event I've ever been a part of. Even the day we raced on Friday in the under-23s, it was an experience just being up on the cobble climbs. It was completely lined, and then we came in the circuit, and all 15K of the circuit were just lined with people on the climbs on the circuit were, like, the loudest thing I've ever been a part of. I felt like I was in a tunnel with, like, insanely loud people just screaming ever. Like, you couldn't hear yourself think, you know? It was crazy, but... uh Definitely super cool to, yeah, be a part of that world, especially in Belgium. Kind of the main, the biggest cycling fans in the world, I would say. So that was super cool. I mean, you showed yourself really up there in the mix. And, uh, yeah, you must have taken a lot of confidence away from that. Yeah, it was good. Um, yeah, I was definitely happy with how I rode and uh, how the race kind of went down. And we had a good, solid team there. We had a few guys who uh, 
yeah, we lost a few guys in crashes, but it uh, it all worked out and it came out good. And I was happy with high road, but obviously there was a little bit of a uh, disagreement and some stuff happened in the race. So I don't have the result, but it's still good to know that I can be up there and I'm good enough to kind of mix it up in the top under three, under 23 level. So, well, uh, before we just talk about your 2020, no, 2022 aspirations, what's it like for you to be part of a team such as Trinity Racing that has had Tom Peacock come through there? You've seen how Ben Turner is going up to the World Tour. It, it seems like it is a pretty fast stepping stone to the World Tour. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's definitely a team that's grown. It's not one of the more well-known teams and it hasn't been around that long, but obviously the team environment is really good. And it's kind of proven that, that uh, a lot of guys are making the step up and have been super successful off the team and a few more guys this year going and we're bringing in some good guys next year and the environment is really good. I'm really happy. And uh, it's nice to be in a team where everyone speaks English, even though we're based out of Europe, but it is nice to kind of have that vibe where everyone speaks English and can communicate well. We don't have people speaking different languages much and everyone can speak English, which is a big, big difference. And uh, yeah, I mean, the team is growing at a really fast rate and I think is one of the top under 23 teams now you could kind of say. Um, And yeah, I mean, I can't complain at all. It's been really, really good for me. So yeah, looking forward to 2022. What kind of goals or what kind of aspirations do you have uh, second year in the under 23 category or second year uh, doing some more elite races as well? Yeah, um, I'm definitely looking forward to kind of having the spring. We didn't have a lot of the classics and Rube and that stuff happen in 2021 so in 2022 hopefully we get a full beginning of the year and start out with a good team camp and stuff like that and I think that'll make the team even better and more successful throughout the year having that whole beginning of the year and then a similar later in the year schedule with a lot of good races on the calendar hopefully and yeah I mean try to just improve and be consistent and get some good results and see how it goes from there but yeah pretty Pretty similar goals, um, baby Giro, do nationals, hopefully to a Britain again. So a lot of the bigger races we did this year, target those again next year. Are you thinking Tour de l'Avenir perhaps as well? Um, potentially, yeah. I would definitely be interested in doing that. It depends on the U.S. national team didn't do it this year and has been definitely struggling a little bit with budget issues. But hopefully we can uh, get back to it and be at l'Avenir next year. Well, specialized, if you're watching, just pour some money over to the National American team. Um, yeah. But yeah, how are you going to kind of get around the the travel restrictions and that for the coming year then, since you're going to be doing a lot of racing in Europe? Yeah, um, I mean, it's pretty open now and you can travel back and forth. It's just you have to do the testing protocol. And uh, with elite sport, you can get an exemption for the quarantine. You just have to do a little bit more testing. So it's really not too bad um and then once i'll be over in europe i'll be based out of girona spain and kind of just have a home base there and um from there be going to races so once i'm over in europe i'll be there for majority of the year besides come back for nationals and uh yeah try to get in a good good block in europe and uh travel shouldn't be too bad hopefully opens up more and more we figure out more protocol to make travel easier uh, as time goes on well, best of luck for 2022. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming on, Luke. And well, w- uh, watch out for you with the excitement for the forthcoming years. No, thank you very much for having me on. And uh, yeah, very nice to meet you. I appreciate it.